month of September, we have got a competition running. And if, in a nutshell, you place an order with Meden using our code DIANE10, which uh, gives you an extra 10% off as well, um, you will be entered in a draw to win a prize. And obviously that prize is going to be a Meden product or a voucher. And there's going to be quite a few of those prizes uh, handed out in September, after September. So starting on the 1st of September 2023 and running throughout the whole month of September, if you place an order with Meden for anything, no minimum value required, um, then you will be entered without having to do anything else in the draw. And uh, hopefully early October, we'll be sending out the prizes. So if you want to find out more about the sorts of things that you might win, watch to the end of the video because I'm going to go through some of them at the end. But first of all, I'm going to show you how to paint this cute little scene of a gnome and an owl and uh, something perfect and fun to do with the kids for this autumn or fall. So let's get started. Okay, so I have drawn my sketch that I'm going to use for this painting. And the next step, which I should always do, which um, I don't always, is to uh, go over it with a fine liner because we will make a copy of this sketch available for you on um, our website that you can download for free if you if you uh, want to. So that's um, what we will do. And so that's what I'll do now. And um, I'm using a Stettler 0.5 fine liner for this. It's uh, not new, but I think it'll be okay. Seems to have warmed up a little bit since I started now. I don't mean the weather, that hasn't warmed up. It's horrible today again. Apparently it's all to do with a tunnel of cold air, which should be in Sweden, but has come here instead. Well, go back to Sweden, please. So now I'm drawing the gnome and we'll just put in his hat like that. And then he's got a nice big bulbous nose, and you can give him character with his eyes. You can do those however you want, obviously. And there's his moustache and his nice beard. And he's holding a flower in his hand. And here's his robes, sort of going over his shoes, one shoe, or boot. So there, that's him. And then over, then we've got a mushroom here. Best way to draw a mushroom is just literally to draw the cap and then the underside and then the stem like that. And I thought I would surround this with oak leaves, like this. Just some oak leaves and of course these have that going on under there, don't they? Then we have some of those little mushrooms here with thin stems. like that, and then we've got another big one here. And this one is gonna have Mr. or Mrs. Owl sitting on it. And draw the feet first. I always like to draw the feet of my birds first if I possibly can. And then a nice little round body. If 
She's looking a little bit suspicious. She's not quite sure about the um, intentions of the gnome. So there we are, there's her hat. And then one more mushroom over here. There we are. And then one in the background just to balance it all off. Okay, and then down here we have a few more oak leaves and perhaps some acorns. And I think that'll probably do. So there we are, there's the sketch. And that will go up on the website shortly. So here's my um, color sketch. This is the first, this was the first drawing I did this morning, which I think I'll also make into a tutorial perhaps. Um, obviously, Mr. Um, Gnome has come a wooing of Mrs. Owl, or Miss Owl, should I say. Um, anyway, so then I tried out this brush, this water brush, just to see how it worked and tried out some colours there. So I'll show you um, the brushes now. Uh, I haven't opened any except this one, which I have filled. And what you do is, you can take off that, I suppose, and then undo this. And then you can see there's a big hole there. You could either run that under the tap or you can immerse it in water and let it fill up, which it will do. Okay, so that's now filled. You can see that's now full of water, so we just put the top back on and then it's good to go. And they're all like that. Um, move that out of the way just in case I spill water on it, which I probably will. So there's that one. And then different sizes. That one's smaller. That one's smaller still. That's another flat like that. And this one, small flat. So we've got lots of different sizes there. I've never had this many of these before. So what are there? Six. Wide, flat, medium, flat. Uh, narrow, flat, yes. One, two, three. <coughs> and then the three rounds. So small, medium and large. Okay, so that should be enough to keep anybody busy. Uh, okay, I'm going to put those in there. What I like to use for my um, brushes is one of these um, baskets that I made. I don't know if any of you do crochet. If you have seen um, Jada in Stitches is her name of the um, site, and she shows you how to make these. I've made lots of them in different sizes, and they're really, really I really like them. I prefer them to using sort of hard things to put stuff in. So I, I have I have them all over the place and sometimes I even put the jars inside them. So that one holds my pens and this one I think is going to find its um, metier there as a brush holder. So stick you all in there. Right, I'm just trying to clear some space, move the palette up a little bit. Um, probably go around that side because I'll probably be more likely to make blues and greens. And so and you'll have to excuse me if you can't see all of it. Uh, right, so let's uh, start. For the background, I suppose I might as well do what I did before, which was paint the background with the, the broad flat. And let's pick up some bluey green. And you could, you could paint round, the leaves that you've put in, or you can um, go over them and then just put the leaves in afterwards. 
And the thing with the water brush is, as you put the paint on, you can squeeze this bit here where it says push, and that will release a little bit of the water. So as you go along, you can just use that to control the flow. Now, I'm, I'm not terribly experienced with this, to say the least, uh, but I think it's probably quite a good system. I'm sort of missing missing the brush the uh, the leaves going round the leaves a little bit, but because it doesn't matter because they're green anyway, aren't they? So it doesn't matter if you're going to put green over blue; it won't matter. So we're just not worry too much about that. And I'm squeezing the brush to let more water out so that I can spread out the blue, and then painting in my usual loose style. We'll just put a rough background of blue behind everything in a sort of delicate fashion. And then we want some green. And I'm just picking up different greens here and I don't, I don't want this to be too realistic. So I'm going to go for a sort of bluish green in the background here because um, if we start bringing in too much yellow, it, it might look a bit unpleasant. So we're going to paint our greens in a, in a sort of extension of the sky kind of colour. And then when I come back to do the leaves and things, there'll be the contrast. So we just try and paint behind where the mushrooms are going to be, just a little bit. And you know, you can do this in, in your style, however, however you feel like it. But having got to that point, um, it's probably best to let it dry so that when we do the um, characters there, they won't all run into the background. So I'll turn you off for a second and dry this. So in order to make some kind of decision about what um, colours to paint my gnome, um, I'm thinking, yes, this is actually a an autumn picture. So let us um, paint the leaves in autumnal shades. So I've picked up the medium, I think, round brush, and I've just mixed a bit of burnt sienna with a bit of um, what's basically cadmium yellow. And um, so I've just painted some of the leaves like that, and then I'll just add some brown for the stem of the branches, like that. This one, you could start with the branch, because you've got that on your brush, you could. Then go to the brown, and you can put in as many or as few leaves as you want. I'll just start with a few. This brush is nice, there's nothing wrong with it. Easy to paint with. So we just put some few darker leaves in to give a variety. Go back to the yellow, mix with a bit of brown. All sorts of different colors of an autumn, autumnal nature. So there we are. And while we've got these colours on our brush, we can come down here and just have a go at the oak leaves, which are always wonderful shades of rusty brown and so on and so forth. I apologise for being influenced in my nature uh, choices by the fact that I live in the Northern Hemisphere of uh, Europe and so if you don't have these kinds of, um, if, if you're sort of palm tree and so on based, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so you could um, doodle this if you want to. I'm going to paint his hat in a nice reddish brown and you could, you could do several things here. You could add different colours 
to give some variety. So, um, you know, a little bit of a, a darker brown down one side, for example, in the shaded area. Or you can just paint it completely flat. It doesn't really matter. I've put a kind of bobble on the end there, but I don't know that that's particularly suitable for gnomes, but... Um, and then I think, since I've got the reddish colour here, I'm going to um, paint the mushroom behind, I think. If you if you want to come in with um, doodlies, you know, you know what I mean. Um, let's paint the one in front in a sort of yellowish colour, perhaps. I like that colour much. There we are, that's better. And the stem is going to be quite pale, isn't it? They usually are, so we'll just do that quite lightly, like that and that one behind as well. Um, okay, so let's have him in a blue coat, shall we? Maybe a nice blue. to be a little bit careful about squeezing the brush, as I just discovered. Okay, and then have another mushroom here. And I will do some line work on this afterwards because I think that always makes things look better. And then let's make these ones pinkish in the background here, perhaps. Underneath the mushroom is always darkish brownish color. color. And what color should we do this one? Should we make this reddish again, perhaps? Perhaps we don't want too many different colors. And then let's have a little hat for the owl. And then the owl is going to be in moderately realistic colors for her wings. And then perhaps some feathers and I'm gonna have to wait for her feet until she's a bit dry. And then beak, I suppose would be brownish, yellowish, something like that. And I'll do her eyes with a pen. And same goes for him as well. And I think probably I made a mistake here because unless he's had a blue rinse on his hair, his hair is going to be there, isn't it? He 
he's going to have to be one of those gnomes that has different coloured hair from his beard, like a lot of people. Okay, well that's enough paint and let's see what we do next. So I realised what I needed to do is to bring his hat down further, that's what was wrong there. So we'll, we'll do that. Maybe even a bit further still. There we go, that's all right now, I think. And maybe just bring that round there a little bit further. Okay. Yeah, and then he needs his shoes, doesn't he? I think. Make his boots brown as well. And I'm going to do some line work on those leaves to make them look more realistic. So do we want to give him a red nose? Well, maybe we don't want to too red a nose. Perhaps we'll just give him, whoops. <laughs> I was thinking pink, actually. So we'll just blot that off. I don't know how I picked that up. There we go. It's a nice pink nose. And then to give the effect of uh, his beard colour, we want a very light grey, so we can just put a few little textured bits in. And, oh yes, he needs pink hand. And I'll draw the flower in with ink first. So yeah, I think now we are at the point where we want to do some drawing. I've got a Tombow pen here for Denisuke BS, that's Black Soft. And um, so that should be nice and expressive. You're never quite sure how this is all going to turn out. Yes, it's, uh... oh, we lost our cockerel yesterday, day before yesterday. I let him out because he was really bothering the hens. So I let him out and I thought he won't go far. <laughs> he disappeared. Uh, but this morning he came back, so it's like a day later, um, two days later. Very hungry, I would say he was. I knew he'd come back. I dreamt about him last night. I was went to I was asleep. I woke up early this morning, went back to sleep because it was too early to get up. And I found myself dreaming that Gabriel, his name is, had come back. And I said to Tamsin, when we got up and having breakfast, I said, Oh, you know what? I dreamt um that Gabriel came back last night. And she said, Oh, so did I. I dreamt the same thing. So we said, Oh, well then he's bound to be back today, isn't he? And lo and behold, I was just getting ready to come to work in the dining room there and uh, taking some homeopathy. And I looked out the window and it's like, there's the, there's the cockerel, he's back. And he's hungry. I thought he would be, you know, scrounging around and eating 
what he found in the gar- in the in the ground. You know, aren't they supposed to be able to survive in the wild? He's a bird, after all. But uh, he came back. He decided life in the wild was not all it was cracked up to be. A bit like Chicken Run, that film. Some of the chickens are not quite sure about the idea of being free. You can probably hear him in the background there crowing, but we're not going to let him in with the girls because he's he's hurting them. He's got spurs on his legs now and they need cutting. I like these pink mushrooms. So we'll just go make our way across the page. I like this uh, Tombow pen because when you press hard, you get a thick line like that. And when you press lightly, you get a very fine line and it's nice and expressive. And this paper takes it quite well. The, uh, The ink. Do his moustache quite lightly around the outside edges. I haven't really done anything quite like this before, so a little bit unsure. There we go, his flower and fingers. Give him some character with his eyes. Don't want to do too much on his nose. Uh, okay, so we're getting there. You will find if you do if you do it like this, where you do the painting first very very loosely, and then um, you do some ink work, you'll find that the colours look better. I always find that too, especially when I don't drip water all over my painting. I don't know where that came from. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it makes the colours look better. Don't know why, just does. And that was definitely worth bringing that round to the front there a little bit. His hat, I had made a mistake with. Okay, so probably need a few more leaves down here, which I can fill the colour in on later. You could put all sorts of things here. You could put ferns going up, you know, or pine or whatever you want to call it. You could put holly. This is a kind of not very Christmassy. This is meant to be autumn, so we should stick with the autumn colours, I think, there. So we'll just put some paint in on those leaves. I think you might enjoy this one. Put some yellow on here. I don't know what that is, but why not? And then, if you want, having got that far, it's up to you. You could embellish it with some spirals and some dots and things like that. For example, um, I think I've got a white pen here somewhere. This is an Artistro white pen. And if it obliges by working, it would be good to 
put onto the red mushroom some white spots like that and anywhere that you feel you want to liven things up you know you could put some dots on here you could do all sorts of things but I'm not going to do that right now you could give him some stripes you know on his hat perhaps you could even have some stars and a moon because if he's a gnome he might be a wizard like Gandalf but that's entirely up to you what you do there so there we are one little autumnal gnome and owl scene hope you enjoyed that that was quite fun um, I think perhaps we could do with something in the middle here, but I'm not quite sure what, so I'll leave that for time being. But there we are. There's no place like Gnome. So now I just want to mention again the giveaway that we've organised with Meaden. If you place an order with them in September, you can win a prize. This is just a portion of what Meaden have on their website. Um, and the link will be in the description below for you to go and have a quick look if you haven't already, or if you've been wondering whether to buy something or not, now would probably be a reasonably good time to do so. So yeah, and I've just got a few of their things here which I've been using recently and um, would like to be able to, and can in fact, recommend. So let's uh, just go through some of those. My first introduction to Meaden was when I was looking for a palette to take with me when I was traveling to England and I wanted something that I could um, put a lid on and I found them rattle rattle crash crash I found them on Amazon and they I, I was tempted by this this is a little palette with a lid the lid serves as a mixing tray so you can put your favorite colors in there from the tubes that you've got this is core paint and uh, I only had six colors so I stuck those in there I can mix them in these little center reservations here or on here if I want a bigger wash, I can make it on here. So this is actually quite handy for traveling with, but you do need to put an elastic band around it. But apart from that, that works really well. And I was quite impressed because they're not expensive at all. I thought that's really good value for money. So I ordered this one too, which I have found to be less uh, useful. But um, somebody said, oh, you could use that for sorting things like sorting beads and stuff like that. I know nothing about bead sorting, so I'm not going to... Um, offer any kind of opinion on that but um, perhaps you could um, and I think some people might also find it useful for painting if you're the sort of person that paints with small amounts of pigment you could um, put 12 or so in there and mix on here and that works in the same way as, as that one and then we've got these other circular ones here this one's nice it's got plenty of spaces two larger ones in the middle um, then there's this one as well, the traditional um, uh, flower-shaped, daisy-shaped one that uh, you can buy almost anywhere. Then there's this one, which is similar, but a little bit smaller. I mean, there's something for everyone's taste, really. My favourite probably is this square one. And the reason, one of the reasons I like that is because um, if, you, if you use uh, the uh, Kiritake colours, and you want to just pick a couple of colors out, you can stick them in these containers here. Forget, forget what's here, but you can do that. You see, you can just put them in there while you're using them and use some of the bigger spaces to um, mix in. That's one way you could do that. So that's handy and I do use that quite often for painting with, so I like that one. Um, but they're all good, crash, bang. Uh, this tray also, you've seen me use this a lot, it's just basically a white plate. Um, and if you've got a white plate that you don't mind sacrificing for your art, use that. But if you haven't, that's good. Nice and clean, easily cleanable. And uh, it doesn't bead, you know, how if you use a plastic um, thing to mix on, you get that beading effect, which can be a bit annoying. And then there's this, which is um, a pot. They sell this as a thing to put water in. I don't use it for that, it's not big enough for me. I like a bigger container for my water, but 
It's quite stylish. It's not bad, is it? Um, what I use it for is pens. I put my fine liners in one side and black ones, black and sepia, and on the other side I put my golds and whites. And I find that that works quite well for me. So this is, this is nice. So there we are, that's the palettes. Um, as well, they have a very good range of paper, which is the same as the Baohong Academy. And if you look on their website, you will find that they've got one pad which has got this uh, cover on it, and the rest all say Academy. And they've got now the rough, the hot press, and the cold press in three different sizes. This one, one smaller, one bigger. So there's a big range now. Um, and if you've used the Baohong Academy paper, you'll know that it's good paper. If you've used this one, Ditto, you'll know that that's good paper because it's the same. Same paper, same manufacturer, same deal. So that's that. Um, they also have brushes. This is their set of watercolour brushes. They look pretty hum horrific, I think. I don't like this colourway at all, but I have used them and they are fine. And for the price, this is brilliant for kids because you know what children can be like with brushes. Um, they can easily get destroyed. And if you paint in acrylic, really, you're likely, whatever you do, you're going to get buildup of acrylic at the bottom of the brush here, no matter how much you clean it. I've never managed to keep, or oil, come to that. I've never managed to keep oil or acrylic brushes clean. Uh, Watercolour is different. These are intended for multi-purpose use. So they're really good and uh, can't go wrong with those. It's not a bad set uh, for the price. They have um, this masking tape. This comes in different widths. This is wide, medium, normal, narrow, very narrow. One, two, three, four, five different widths, which is handy. I haven't opened this yet. I haven't got around to needing it, but I'm probably gonna use this with Christmas cards this autumn when we start making those. Um, then we've got their set of um, watercolour uh, water brushes, which I have not opened yet, but I'm going to open those today and try them out. So I'm not going to say anything about them yet because I don't have an opinion on that. Um, the paints, we've talked about a lot um, and I've used a lot. I can't speak too highly for these. As a beginner's set, you can't go far wrong with this. 24 colours, everything you need to mix any colour you like. They're mostly single pigment. They're quite intense. There's not a lot of filler. They flow in the normal fashion. There is nothing, in my opinion, to mitigate against them. And they're about $16 for the set. So again, if you're buying something for children and they want tubes, you know, not tiny children, but young teenagers, 10, 11 years old, something like that. A set like this will set them off on a very good path. And then finally, the last thing is, this, oh my God, this palette, which they sent me kindly, which is huge. It's like the Stephen Quiller one, very similar, about a third of the price, I think. I can't see any difference but I don't have a Stephen Quiller one, but I do have this and I use this quite a lot. Don't forget, for the month of September, if you buy something from Maiden, you will get entered in their prize draw and use the code DIANE10 and you get your extra 10%. So let's just have one more quick look at the, the final picture. After I'd left it for a little while, I came back with, um, with a poetic pen here in a nice dark green and I just added a little bit of grass along the bottom there. Completely optional. I thought I would just see what that would look like and uh, so that's what that looks like. I also used some of these pens just to touch up um, the leaves and uh, odd bits and pieces where I'd left gaps with the watercolour paint. So that was um, just something I did later. Um, also, I have now used the pens, as you know, the watercolour brushes, the water brushes, not the watercolour brushes, the water brushes, these ones, which are great. And um, I'll be using those again in future. So this is something which Meaden are very good at. Actually, I think those are better than the ones I had before, which were um, Kur Kuretake ones, weren't they? 
but these ones seem to be much more sturdy, which is always good. I do tend to hammer things rather hard. So I will let you go now and I'll see you again soon. And um, don't forget to enter the competition. So bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.